Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Before we get into this video, everything I say is not motherfucking fact in this bitch, so don't take it as such. Girls can't take my motherfucking mouth, bitch. My mouth is real and it's raw and it's watchy, bitch. I'm gonna give the girls exactly what the fuck they asked for. The girls is going to know my rap. Trust me. Well, 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 hello, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time you're listening to this, because you know YouTube likes to play the fuck out of me with this uploading. I could upload it at 3 a.m. in the morning, and then this bitch wanted to take five hours to upload. So I appreciate you guys listening to this whenever you guys are. And yes, this is a real housewives of Potomac recap. And if you can't comprehend, that's on you. As I know some of you comment, as I said last week in my recap, he's talking again. Yes, I am. So let's get into it. The first scene that we have is uh, is this continuation of Mia and Jacqueline. Jacqueline, did you and Gordon ever have sex? No. They think we're in some tobacco, like some threesome together. Like, oh, th I, th us three. Was that another narrative that was tried, was like... No, I think that was a narrative that um, some of the ladies here believed or thought that we did. Okay. And y'all ran with that? Uh, okay, hey. It's me interrupting again. Um, I'm with Wendy because I feel like they were pushing this narrative of them having a menage a trois. I'm not sure if it just was for clickbait as it would have brought more attention to their storylines and just i don't know maybe they wanted more lesbian strap fans i don't know but it just seems to me that they were the ones pushing this narrative i mean yes we had giselle asking the questions of them wait well hold on wait a minute because you're saying this is like your sister jacqueline and mia but y'all showering together and i'm not saying that sisters and brothers and whatnot can't shower together but it's just I know I wouldn't with my siblings or closest friends because I don't want to see them in that way and I'm not sexualizing them I'm just saying like I don't want to see them naked so I don't know what y'all got going on but I don't I, I okay I just hopefully next season we don't have to hear about any more of this menage a trois because I really do like both of these girls. I want both of them to come back. I love me some Jacqueline and Mia is growing on me even though she lies and is unhinged as Jacqueline says. But she's growing on me. The antics I'm living for is I'm not going to lie. Um, and G, shout out to him and his strap. I know he's going through it um, with his... What he got erectile strappy on or something. I don't know what's going on, but shout out to his strap and I hope he's doing well. But back to Mia and Jacqueline. Um, I didn't run with it. I don't Mia never said that we had sex. What's that? Um, I just visited Giselle. Mia and Jacqueline got to drinking. Uh-huh. And I've said I'd never hold anything back from you. So yeah. she was too happy to tell me that you and Jacqueline, she peeped you all showering nude together. Where were you in Miami? Were I you in the same in house? in my room where I should be. I mean, that's fine if that's what y'all want to do, but we're going to ask questions. They're in the window. Yes. They want to be seen. So you and Jacqueline shower together. Yes, me too. Okay, so it's something you enjoy. Are you sleeping with married men? No, I'm not. So I'm not sleeping you come with up any with married men. Where'd you come up with that, Mia? You know, I'm going to let her have that one. So, uh, Mia, why is it okay for you to sleep with Gordon when he was married, but then call out Jacqueline for doing the same thing? Do the two of you have a sexual relationship? No. We do not. You do not? No. I never believed that. Okay. It just never seemed. Me and Mia are just like a... We, we were mm. close I friends. I think shout out to a lot of my girlfriends. And we're like sisters. Okay. Hey. He, me interrupting again because, like I said earlier, I don't know many siblings, aka best friends, that shower together. And if y'all do, I'm not judging. It's just new to my world. And I'm not sticking flashlights up my friend's nannies or booty holes or something like that. I just, maybe I'm prude or sour over here. But I just, when it comes to friends and seeing them naked and family, that's just not something I want to see in my world, in my book. I don't know, but yeah, back to Mia and Jacqueline and whatever they get into, because I could have sworn y'all saying y'all don't have a sexual relationship, but it's giving y'all did. And it's giving y'all were sharing that strapiana of G. I'm not saying he has a strap. I'm just saying, you know, his thing ain't. Okay, let me not do too much. Back into these clips. You kissed? Mm, no. You fondled? A little bit, yeah. Okay, that's what yeah. I thought I wanted to be a gynecologist, so I was like checking cervix and stuff. Oh, you went in his vajayjay. <laughs> oh. Okay. You know what? <laughs> so I just want right. to explain that. She was like, can you just look in there and see what's going on in there? Was she itching or something? I wanted to make sure it was all good. Mm. I had a flashlight and everything. You looked inside? <laughs> I wanted to go get some tongs too, because that's what I saw. 
Karina from New Jersey said, Mia, if you had such an issue with Jacqueline sleeping with married men as a friend, why not discuss that with her in private rather than outing her in front of the girls because on national Because we're on a reality show about our no, lives. that's not why. It's me interrupting again, and I just wanted to think or slash say out loud my theory that's been in my head, like... Are Mia and Jacqueline faking this for a storyline so that Mia's best friend Jacqueline can come on the show next season and be a friend of or a flute holder? Like, was all of this just for Jacqueline to have a spot on the show? I would hate to have to think that due to the way Mia threw her under the bus in exposing Jacqueline's, like, domestic violence situation and throwing it in her face. Um, and bringing up her sister. Um, <laughs> I don't know, like... Was all of this just for a storyline next season of you guys becoming friends again or what? Like, what's happening? Because I don't know how y'all could be sisters for all this time and you sticking flashlights up her nanny. And now it's what we're looking at now. Like, what's happening? I only outed Jacqueline. It was a response. And she came after Gordon. She basically said that I need to get more dick. You better not ever talk about a married man. I better not ever catch you. Mm. What you think you did when you met yours? Hmm? I I didn't come to this group and say, oh, Jacqueline, sleep with a married man. No, but you came after my husband's Mia. penis. Uh, okay, I'm. You know what? My brain is about to explode hearing any more about married men and hopping on G's penis because I'm thinking to myself. We had this married men, close your legs to married men type storyline years ago with Kim Zosiak and it's played out because I would hope to think or you, whatever, my tongue's getting trolled up in this bitch. That must mean Sharice is coming back out soon enough because she's playing that voodoo on my tongue again. Leave me alone, Sharice. Leave me alone so I can leave you alone. This devil egg lady, no, but for real, um, what's really happening here? I don't know how much I can take more of hearing of G, Mia, and Jacqueline. As I told you, I, I do like them. I just don't want to hear about this menage a trois and close your legs, open your legs to married men. Like, what's going on? Because you're giving us a confusing message because I, isn't G married and wasn't Jacqueline sleeping? Weren't y'all sharing? Like, what's happening here? Something, I feel like y'all need better guidelines to your throuple relationship because then it would help y'all, like, better to deal with whatever y'all are dealing with because it's confusing me, yeah? Okay, back into these motherfucking clips. But be careful because I do have a text message of you saying that I need to stop married men and I'm in love with a married man. So, you know, be careful, two can tango. I want, you, you need to publicly apologize to Jackie. The, the scale is unbalanced. What you did to my sister, we're not even talking about how you defame my character, bitch, okay? I'm cool with that. I just had a gig this week. That ain't doing nothing. You ain't doing nothing with that. Cause he just always gonna get work, bitch. That has never, let me get some, some, some visuals. That has never been a problem or an issue. Never been an issue. Because one thing's for two and two things for certain. One thing's for sure and two things for certain. It's always, people are always gonna need that care. Somebody always gonna need a babysitter. Somebody always gonna need their house clean. Somebody always gonna need a nanny. Huh? That, I don't even worry about that. So if you met him when he was married, then how are you saying close your legs to married men? I should have closed my legs to a married man too, but I didn't, yeah, exactly. but I'm not denying it. She's denying it, it's a difference. Here's the thing, it's not necessarily that I was coming after her because she was sleeping with a married man. Just don't talk about me not getting any penis at home when you are, she needs to worry about all her different penises, okay? How much have you and Gordon bought for Jacqueline? We know about the Porsche. No, she lied about that. We didn't buy her the Porsche. She needed to be, she needed a story. Ah, uh, Mia, 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 Mia. Come on now, stop playing in my face. Stop playing in our face. I told you I like you, but, and I do acknowledge you lie to house down, so why am I shocked? But like, why are you pretending as if you weren't helping perpetuate this lie of you buying Jacqueline's car. Like y'all both, huh? Mia said, if she's winning, you win it, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So she bought your Porsche? Honey, I, I make my own coins. It is in my name, so I income qualified to get the vehicle. Yes. Did you help me put 
a down payment on it because you knew that at that moment I was spending a lot of money to get out of this unhealthy relationship and you wanted to give me a cushion because you love me. She loves you. I was like, I just want clarity. Right. Go like, because who's buying the car? Is this Gordon buying you a car? Like, like, what's going on here? You driving a Porsche, right? Uh-huh. So I'm thinking, me and bought your car. Her car is in her name. Yes. Yeah. Um, I've had enough of that. So the next thing we get is Miss Deviled Egg Lady. They finally bring out this bitch. Who, I mean, okay. They finally bring out Miss Cherise, who's been dying to come out. Y'all know she's been sitting in the back, chomping at the bit to come out and talk to Karen and see Karen and obsess over Karen as she normally do. No, but let's finally hear this bitch. I'm okay. Let me, Lord, bind my mouth and my tongue. Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. Let's listen to Sharice and welcome her. Yes, yay, confetti. Uh, Rachel from New Jersey wants to know why you weren't open to lunch with Sharice. Sharice, you said you wanted to have lunch, right? Right. My, and it hasn't my, happened. My, the reason why but I'm willing wanted, to listen to you. The reason, I'm not the one that invited you to lunch. You invited me. You want, can I finish? Yes. What about the issue between you is so insurmountable that it can't be discussed over lunch? How are you, darling? I'm, I'm fantastic. Good to see Glad you. you made it. Uh, let me break it, break it, break it, break it down for you, Miss Sharice. Okay, I'm not in can. Hold up. <laughs> there goes Sharice playing with me. Doing that voodoo on me or my mouth, girl. I rebuke you. Get away from me. No, but I feel as if Sharice was popping up like a bad penny annoying Karen. Like, if somebody's showing you and telling you and giving you hints that they don't want to be your friend or they're not, like, fucking with you, why are you still getting mad that, like, I'm, hold on, because I'm confused. <laughs> In a I'm confused why Sharice is mad. Karen doesn't want to fuck with her. She's grown. She don't want to be your friend. Take it as that and move the fuck on. Now, I get that the, you know, producers brought you back. And that's why you are back on the show. But I'm going to need the producers to undo it. Because bad decision. Y'all been with the editing, the producing. I'm not going to do too much before y'all have my YouTube shut down. But y'all need to regroup for next season and get it together. Because Sharice is who we not. See, there she go on my tongue again. Sharice is like somebody I don't want to see. I'm not going to speak for everybody, but she's not bringing anything to the table. Like, what did she bring this season besides trying to beef with Karen? And that wasn't interesting. It was the same storyline we've seen when she was on, when she was on before she got fired. So what are we doing here? Like, come on. Tired and delayed is what it's giving, babes. I don't want to sound like a Sharice hater all the way, even though that's what it's giving. But I would have much more preferred if she came on the scene like with a business or her trying, I don't know, just her being messy in this way, like it's not cute. We already have Giselle being messy. We already have Mia being messy and lying. We don't need your Humpty. Okay. Hoo, 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 hoo. I'm a, you know what? I restricted myself. Guess, ooh, let's get back into these clips. I don't fuck with that woman because I don't fuck with that woman. And it's not because she got some tea on me. I want you guys to watch. And I know you all will agree when the truth comes out that you wouldn't fuck with her either. I am I am a little confused. If I was not cool with someone and they took the effort to go to a funeral of a loved one of mine. Andy, I can respect that. But you know that what I mean? Yeah, 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 Andy. I'm going to need you to wake it up with your brain because it's nice Sharice did come to the funeral. But like, I don't want you coming with ill intentions, okay? That's what you're not getting. I don't give a fuck that you came and showed up to whoever's funeral. If you're coming with sour intentions, that means nothing to me. So I don't know what's not clicking with you, Andrew. You need to put the- Allegedly, cause I don't need them doing nothing over here, okay? Stay away from my page. hee <laughs> yeah! Ooh, I was about to eat upon you. You need to take that sour ass hole back to um, Fire Island and sit back there and hire a new host because you are not doing what you're supposed to do in my opinion. I'm getting tired of your old ass. It's time to bring in somebody else because you're not doing it for me. But let's get back into you questioning and not doing a good job of it. Okay? No, wow. my mother's... And that would be, night, well, that would be very meaningful mother. to me. Exactly. I'm not trying to ride Karen Zanani as I, you guys get. I'm a Karen Huger fan. But Andy, you just said that to you, that would be meaningful. To you, to your coquette. Allegedly in this bitch because I don't want to get sued in this motherfucking hoe. And that's a lawsuit. You are going to jail. Period.
Oh. <laughs> Let me stop. Okay, you are not everybody. You don't speak for everybody. So how Karen should feel in the situation of Cherie showing up to her funeral with ill intentions, you do not say how she should feel. Okay, ho? No, I'm playing. I get his perspective, but like then again, also think of another perspective. If somebody's coming with ill intentions and they're only showing, I don't know. It's just open your eyes to both sides. How about that? I'm not gonna talk about my mother again because the more we talk about it, the more we relive it and we, we go back to it. Hold on now, mother. Hold on now, cause you got the first seat. So I'm gonna need you to get into it as this is the reunion. So I know you don't wanna keep talking about your mother in this situation of Sharice and you want Sharice to get her ass out when this segment ends. But like also you have this first seat. So I'm gonna need you to start working for it because you know, honestly, your spot could have been given to, let's see. Maybe Mia, she could have had the first seat because she had a lot of controversy going on this season. And I would say Robin, but hers didn't really happen until after. But yeah, Karen, clear this up so we can clear Sharice and get her out my face. I respectfully decline to answer any more questions about my mother's funeral. So five years ago, this person and I were not friends. Um, and that person had been kicked off the bus. That person was fired. So let's repeat the moisturizer, by the way, washing again. I do it twice. So that person had been fired, and we are not friends. So imagine how my family and myself felt when this person showed up at my mother's funeral. We were in shock. We didn't know what to expect. I sort of suspected, but didn't know for sure. So we decided to give her grace and extend her grace and was hoping that she was coming out of the kindness of her heart and there was a change of foot with her. Um, needless to say, we were wrong. Within months of attending my mother's funeral, she was at Candace's one year anniversary party trying to talk about it on film. I was able to shut it down then. Fast forward now, she's trying to get back on the bus by any means necessary, once again, bringing up my mother's funeral. Let's, let's just, That's all it was. Let's finish this, uh, you know, Rumor uh, collage. I, th these horrible things you said about me. Not true at all, Cherise, and you've never seen me Would do you, anything what, like what? that. What, what, what did we I say? Uh, Miss Devil Egg Lady been begging and scratching and crawling to get back on the motherfucking scene, and now she can't remember anything that she's been doing and saying, girl, Eat a dick. You know, I don't talk about other people's personal That's life and the husband, stuff that comes game. out and people say things. I mean, people say you have a boyfriend. Do I talk about that? Blue eyes or whatever his name is. Like here, and I, I, you know, I don't, I, Carlos, I really don't talk about people, but this woman has said so much about me for some reason unbeknownst to me because I really would never put her shit out on Front Street or say anything about her. If I wanted to say this stuff, I could have said it for season one, season two. It's just not my MO to put people's stuff out there, but now nah, I don't give a fuck, so. But let's be clear. Does Sharice have a lot of um, tea on Karen? Uh, yes, she does. And it will be spilled. The tea will be spilled, people. Don't you worry. Is the tea that Karen allegedly has stepped out on her marriage? Uh, Carlos, I can't say all of that. I'm getting a phone call from Bravo now. <laughs> but I'm gonna say. <laughs> I hate these phone calls. I'm going to say that um, Sharice has tea that we've all known, but we just didn't spill it. You said something. I can't repeat oh, it. Uh, having sex you in said the bathroom a lot. the workroom. Um, and the reason that I said it was because you were spewing out all these things that people were telling you about me. I don't it want sure to talk about Sharice. No, it's no. It's inherent. Robin Dixon's loyalty to Sharice I'm like, okay, I thought you were up Giselle's bush <laughs> all these years, but I want to know what bush. I want to know what this woman called Cha Cha or Ha Cha has on her. Talking about Sharice, here she is. Okay, I'm here, and you have something to say to me? I'm not speaking about you. Sharice, you said you wanted to have lunch, right? Right. And my, it has to happen. My the reason why but I'm willing wanted, to listen to you. The reason I'm not the one that invited you to lunch. You invited me. You want? Can I finish? Yes. They owe me an apology. They owe me an apology, but I'm not gonna hold my breath because I'm having a great time. Uh, one of my 
former castmates called me and told me to sue Sharice. You know, listen, I'm very financially able to sue Sharice, but I wouldn't waste a penny on Sharice. Why is Giselle and Robin so invested in pushing this woman that's been kicked off the bus down my throat, trying to make us be friends when we will never be friends, uh, and, and rightfully so? Well, let me answer that question for you. Giselle already told you in her prior interviews uh, that for the season with other outlets that, you know, she bought Sharice back so that she can do her dirty bidding. And I can only surmise that that is because Giselle wanted to get back at me for saying she had a hot box. And that's that. Okay. Um, how that working for you? Not good at all. Robin, on the other hand, is mad with me because I called out her fake ass wedding. Yeah, Sianna, get that hoe, Iana. I'm on face, Sianna. Yes, love all Sharice. And if I see y'all trying to bring that bitch back next season, I won't be watching. Okay, I'm lying, but for real, I'm gonna <laughs> watch with one eye or something like a Cyclops because no, I don't want to see her no more unless she's coming back with some new energy, a new look, a new cut, a new color. No, if she comes back with a actual storyline, I'll maybe have interest in her. But until then, if she's still talking and beefing and having issues with Karen, I'm not interested. Let's be for real. So let's move on to the next segment we get, which is the talking about Waniana with Miss Strapiana. Oh, grr. Karen, you revealed that not only does Juan have a secret girlfriend, um, the girlfriend looks like you. What's up, Robin? Hey, so I'm here with Ashley, and Ashley's telling me that Karen has come to her and said that you have a, a girlfriend that has long blonde hair and that you walk the streets of Georgetown holding hands with her Robin, and Robin, Robin. a blonde hair. You said she, so she's like old like Karen? Robin, Robin, I'm about, to, I'm about to hang up because this is why I don't like this Robin, Juan has been in the news lately because a cop and state player of his on, on the team came to him to report being sexually harassed by the assistant coach. And um, he failed to report it. Can you, what can you tell us about this? And is it, how is it affecting your family? This is Ibn Williams, a hooper at Coppin State. His head coach is Juan Dixon, seen here, the former Maryland Terrapin star and NBA player, plus Lucian Brownlee, director of player development and director of basketball operations, who was accused of catfishing, then blackmailing his own player, Ibn Williams. Dixon was informed of what went down and failed to take action against Brownlee and support his former player, Williams. Brownlee harassed tormented and essayed Williams before publishing intimate material he had obtained from the student. The things that have been alleged, the wrongdoings that have been alleged that Juan supposedly did are not true. And I know that he handled the situation exactly the way I would want somebody to handle a situation for my own children. Hey, it's me again. Um, hey Juan, he, I'm a, let me talk to you for a minute because I know the situation I'm about to bring up is separate from the one dealing with the catfish Yana situation of, yeah, dealing with the school and coaching and so on. But it seems to me if you can't be honest about sleeping with somebody you're claiming, or excuse me, not sleeping with, because I don't know that to be true, but you did pay for a hotel and your name was on the receipt, but you're claiming that you paid for the hotel because the girl lost her wallet, but you don't know the girl, but you were just doing it to be nice. I really don't know if you're the most like reliable person to tell the truth, especially when you just don't tell the truth, like what's going on and your wife don't tell the truth either. So I really don't. I hope that the victim finds a solution to this situation. And I hope that yeah, because this is too much. <laughs> like, what? Dixon was informed of what went down and failed to take action against Brownlee and support his former player, Williams. In the complaint, Williams says he received messages through his socials from a woman. Williams reportedly was enticed into sending images of himself to this person of a sexual nature he believed were private and in the context of developing a romantic relationship, the lawsuit says. With the exchange of photos and videos... Williams was exploited by the woman into sending more or else she was going 
to publish them. With threats of Williams losing his place on the team, plus his tuition, room, and board payments, Williams felt he had no choice but to continue responding to his tormentor. This is when Brownlee, a fellow player of Williams's at the time at Coppin State, revealed to Williams that he had also been blackmailed by the same woman. Of course, put in quotes. The blackmailer then ordered the two men to record themselves having sex and send it to said tormentor. At first, Williams didn't oblige, but with fall semester's beginning, he complied per the suit. Williams' attorney is Daniel Epstein of Epstein Ostro. And this is where Epstein reached the eye-opening conclusion. By information and belief, the blackmailer was Coach Brownlee, the complaint says. Williams, with unaliving himself on his mind because of how much he was tormented, went to his family and basically said there is rampant drug use when they're on the road. So Williams' father meets with Dixon, and Coach Dixon basically says he's helpless to address the drug issue. Fall of 2020, Williams returns to campus and the blackmailing continues. This time, Williams, though, didn't respond when he returned to campus, and that's when the material used to blackmail plaintiff was published and revealed to members of the team, staff, and the public, the lawsuit says. Per Epstein, those messages, because Williams didn't respond, apparently, were then blasted out to the masses through Instagram. That's when head coach Juan Dixon, even with all this being made public and Williams not being in the best frame of mind, Dixon demanded Williams attend practice. The complaint would then state Dixon admitted that Brownlee was mentally ill or otherwise emotionally imbalanced and that his history was known to the coach and the athletic director plus the school. Thus, Head coach Dixon was also named in the complaint for allegedly failing to support Williams by taking appropriate action upon learning of Brownlee's actions. In addition, Coppin State University was also named after officials retaliated against Williams by reportedly withholding his financial aid and housing, allegedly blaming the athlete for the negative media coverage in connection with the incident, which stemmed from Williams asking for an investigation in which, according to the suit, a lawyer for the university further traumatized Williams with questions about his sexual past and orientation. It's cringeworthy, the questions that he was asked, Epstein would go on to say. For Coppin State, they would violate their own set of rules and code of conduct. The complaint stated the school whose policy on sexual misconduct prohibits R word, sodomy, quid pro quo, stalking, sexual exploitation, coercion, and retaliation took no action to remedy the situation. Here are my closing thoughts. Per the Grio, Juan Dixon admitted that Lucian Brownlee was mentally unstable. Why hire him in the first place without vetting? this candidate for a position on your staff. That falls on Juan Dixon, which of course will then lead to trauma for Williams, Williams' family, and any kids that Williams will have. Uh, anyways, the next scene we get is they finally bring Chris out and he confronts Giselle and you know, I've had enough of this. Like I said in the beginning, this should have never happened. They should have never been in the room together. I know they were friends and so on and it shouldn't be a big deal, but no. Come on now, you know Giselle, and you know how she is. Let's be real. Okay. You had your time. You've done your interviews. It's my turn. I haven't had these opportunities, right and I'm gonna I take wait. it now. Ooh, come on, Chris. Chris is on ten, and rightfully so. I don't want to hear y'all talking about he's doing too much. He's doing just enough for them using him as a storyline all season. But I feel like maybe he wouldn't be so involved if he would, you know, play the back like the other husbands. Like you don't see Eddie being dragged into any. Okay, you do. But I feel like he has, le I don't know. <laughs> Let me change my mind in this bitch because while I was going to say Eddie doesn't get dragged into this nonsense, they do try to drag him in. But he doesn't really, in my opinion, I don't see any other husbands like tweet and more so like interact with the other girls. Granted, they have been talking about Chris again all season. But if he maybe didn't go to the room and 
I don't know, maybe felt less inclined to get involved. I know he wants to stick up for his wife, but play the back. So therefore, we won't have a problem next season or an excuse with them bringing up, Chris did this, Chris said that, Chris was in a room with me alone. Let's just did that. Stop talking to the wife. Stop tweeting them. Stop tweeting about them. If they start talking about you, let them look crazy. Let Candace handle it. That's just my opinion. I mean, I understand he has his feelings and should speak up for himself, but look how it gets turned, twisted, and dissected now. When you opened the door and your team was not in there, why didn't you just say, hey, nobody's in here. I thought they were in here. We can have this conversation later. And that's what I talked about. That's it. And that went on for, uh, man, it's like 10, 12 minutes maybe. And then she did, she did say, you know, we've been talking for a while. Can you see if they're ready? And I said, absolutely. And I went to go check. And as I was walking out the door, there was somebody right there coming to get her anyway. And that was that. Um, that evening, you said to me, Chris, hey, can you do me a favor? And I said, sure. And you said, can we talk? And I said, sure. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. And then you said, well, can we go to your room? And I That's said, right. fine. Now, you told your wife that I asked you to go to my room, and that's not true. Please. I said, Giselle, can we talk? And she said, yeah, let's go to my room. So she suggested going to your room? 99% uh, sure that that's how that went down. That's not true at all. And again, we can agree to disagree right there. Whatever it is, you feel how you feel. I'm not discounting your feelings. You still have not told me what I'm, I did. I'm getting there. Well, let's go. Okay. Uh, uh, You've okay. had 10 months. Uh, Candace <laughs> and I are where we need to be, which is I know who she is, I see who she is, and... You know, I just, I wish her the best. I wish her and her husband the best. You could have called me and you didn't because no. you wanted to wait for no. an opportunity to do it on a platform that true. would cause the most hurt to someone who has ever been anything true. but kind to you. And that is what this, uh, that's not that true. is what the, Giselle has a, a history and there is a reputation there of her being fast um, in her past and her being um, loose in her past. This, this is, these are facts. I'm not making this up. Um, so, you know, I see her flirting with Chris and it's like, oh, po, po thing. Just po thing. That's cute. It never You said po me. thing or poke thing? Po. Oh. P O apostrophe. <laughs> po. Po thing. That's, it's, it's just, you, you can't, you can't ask for, for more from, from someone who can only give you less than half. Like, I, I can't. It never bothered me. So he may be attracted. She's a beautiful woman. I'm attracted to Giselle. She's a beautiful woman. Like, I'm attracted she's, she's to Giselle. A beautiful woman. Giselle's gorgeous. Okay. Yes, I agree. L listen, she's beautiful, but a shell is a shell, okay? And shells often have funky insides, and that's one. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's unfortunate, but, you know, I never felt like, Candace is a fun girl. Like, you can go out with her, you can have fun, you can kiki, but then, like, to have, like, a real hardcore relationship with her and uh, and want, and for her to, for you to expect that she's going to be an adult, like, have adult conversations, I've just never gotten that from her. Mm. Looking back on the dance studio moment, do you wish you approached that whole Chris situation differently, knowing that it would eventually result in the kind of, like, demise of your friendship? I approached that situation. I thought about that. I, I approached it there. I, I chose all my words carefully. I didn't add any like extra drama and hot sauce and tea to it, which I know how to do very well. And I didn't do that because we were friends. Now we're no longer friends. So I can real get to the, get to the tea and the nitty gritty of it all. And I, you know, and that's what the reunion is for. And this is where we're going to end it. I mean, there is more parts of the reunion we could discuss like Miss Strapiana in the Juan Iana situation of her on Watch What Happens Live and Andy grilling her. But like, I feel like we discussed that already. I know I said like so many times, but like, 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 yeah. I don't know how many times we can keep going over Juan not being faithful and there's no like new information. I just feel honestly that they should be open and real about their situation, which I don't feel like they fully are. If Miss Strapiana came out and said that she truly wants to be with Miss Giselle and that she straps her down, I would accept that as a real storyline and that her and 
you know, Juan are in an open relationship and he can hook up with whoever he wants to and she can hook up with Giselle. I would love and live for that. And that would give literally Giselle a storyline. That would give Robin a storyline. We would have like our, not our first lesbian housewife because I think Bronwyn from OC was our first lesbian housewife, but Juan, excuse me, not Juan. Miss Robbiana could be the first Strapiana housewife that we've ever had. That could be iconic. So if she owned up to that, and lived in her truth, I would love that for her. Live out loud, girl. Robiana, Tapiana, Strapiana, Dykiana. Robiana, Miss Dyke, 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 Dyke. The Dykiana. Miss Robiana, Miss Dyke, 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 Dyke. Robiana, Tapiana, Strapiana, Dykiana. Robiana, to Tapiana. Miss Strapiana, the Dykiana. Miss Robiana, Miss Dyke, 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 Robiana, Tapiana, Strapiana, Dykeiana, Robiana, the Dykeiana, Robiana. I'm really happy for her to maybe have this opportunity to show some decorum to Robert up as she always does and be the Robert that we know her to be and handle her shit and stop deflecting. Robiana, ah, Miss Tatiana, yes. Let me know if y'all want that on SoundCloud and my wish is your commands. Um, run it up, run the views up on that. Come on now, original um, song in here. I'm giving candy, I'm giving um, mm, Kim Zolciak, yes. Come on, Tardy for the party, come on. Whoa, 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 the ring didn't mean a thing. Um, no, but on a real note, I would like to end this recap here and thank you guys for watching this chaotic season of The Real Housewives of Potomac and getting into these recaps. And before I end it here, I just wanted to address some of the haters, which I know you guys tell me not to do, but why not? I have time. I'm here talking and chatting. Why not? So for the people talking about me reusing clips, girl, I have to insert clips or else I'm going to get copywritten in this bitch and y'all won't be seeing any videos. I do hope you know you can watch the reunion for free on Bravo.com. Listen again, you can watch the full reunion for free on Bravo.com. You are not being forced to sit here and watch my videos or listen to me. So if you are in commenting crazy things, that just makes you look like a sour hating ass bitch. Right? Yeah. Um, also, you guys are not paying my bills. So I want you guys to realize like I do love input and crits. Look, there goes Sharice again. I do love input and constructive criticism but if you're commenting to be a troll like no unless you're giving me money therefore my cash app will be below my patreon will be below and so on because yes help a bitch out we're not begging for money on this channel but like if you guys want quality content consistently i do have a real life out of here so YouTube ain't paying like that and Bravo surely ain't paying unless Bravo want to hire me to edit content you know that would be nice because I feel like I give more than they should give because or I am giving more than they are giving because they leave out a lot of things to fit a narrative to protect their faves but that's another story for another video anyways i would like to thank you guys for liking my videos commenting on my videos and we're gonna get a little bit emotional here i um really do appreciate when you guys like tell me oh your videos make my dark days get better and so on i never thought like these chaotic videos or this channel or my commentary could do such as i'm going through a hard situation myself of being um 26 my brother passing my grandmother passing on the same year before that my best friend passing so i don't really have like a lot of family or family support and i'm 26 i'm not trying to like get sympathy here but i'm just saying like you never know what people are going through and yeah your comments really do make my day much better not me getting emotional in this bitch um yeah again i just want to appreciate you guys um or say i appreciate you guys i know other people have it worse but as somebody who um has been abused as a child i'm still going through the trauma of that and so on so yeah i'm truly opening up on this bitch whoa hold on let me not open up too much before y'all use it against me no i'm playing i don't care whatever y'all use against me but um 
yeah, it's just a tough, exp- it's a tough ride going on right now, especially for me being alone. Um, I know I'm a man. I'm 26. I should get used to it. Maybe. Be- I don't know. Look, girl, we're going through it over here. Just know that you're not the only one going through it. Listeners, trust me. It may seem like I'm living it up, doing these edits and recordings maybe, but a bitch is struggling too. So yeah, I just wanted to have a little real moment for a minute because life gets real and it definitely is real right now. So if I take a little, yeah, it's, it's getting real, honey. Um, But I want to thank you guys for, again, commenting, listening, and watching these videos, and hopefully we'll be back for another recap next week. What show that will be? I don't know, because The Real Housewives of New Jersey is getting on my nerves, so, I mean, until they get over the whole Teresa gets married and Joe and, who is it, Melissa and I going to the wedding, then I, you know, have no interest in watching them. I know they have new girls, but it's getting overtaken by the sour-ass storylines of the past, okay?